Hello everyone, surprise, I'm here. <laughs> well, this is not my usual time slot, nor is it uh, when you normally expect me to bake, but I'm pleased to say that here on Oh Yum, with TJ and Michael's help, we are trying out some new equipment and new tools and new toys. And so we thought, well, instead of just doing a tech test and not uh, doing anything, I thought, well, let's just use this as an opportunity to throw in a bonus recipe. And if all things are going well, I can include this in use, uh, you in this. So I'm seeing the thread here and people are finding that I'm alive. Surprise. And if you're watching me from uh, Asia or Australia, of course, it's morning time there. So maybe you've got your morning coffee or teteric uh, and you're ready to sort of settle into a little break before you get into your day too heavily or perhaps you were working the night shift and and if you're joining me from this continent from north america well it's evening here and it's late afternoon almost supper time on the west coast so no matter where you are i'm so glad you're here and i hope the picture is clear and the sound is clear because the recipe that i want to make for you are one of my personal favorites. And I see Flo had written earlier that it's one of hers as well, my jam thumbprint cookies. And I see the notes are coming. Hello to the Philippines and Malaysia, uh, from Bolivia. Oh, yep, even in South America too, we've got everybody included. Antigua, West Indies, and we are good. This is fantastic. So I'm so glad that you have found me for this surprise little pop-up live video. As I mentioned earlier, we are testing out some new equipment. We're, we have two cameras so you can see things more closely. So there we go. Michael just switched the camera and switching back. <laughs> so we're giving things a test because we want to keep doing these live streams and really make them snappy for you. And we want to keep improving. And so let me get right into the recipe, my jam thumbprint cookies. We're keeping it nice and simple. Um, and, but this is, it's, it's just a delicious little sweet bit of goodness. So let's start things off. If they're easy enough to mix by hand. And so I'm going to measure my three quarters of a cup of unsalted butter. And with a measurement like that, when you're dealing with three quarters of a cup or the equivalent in metric is 175 grams, if you were using salted butter, that's potentially a lot of salt that you're adding to the recipe and you might taste that in the end result. So let me just get, make sure I have my, I'm getting close to my 175. Oh, 10 grams more. I'm there. And if you're new to weighing your ingredients, um, because in North America, we still have that habit of, or sorry, using volume to measure our ingredients. You can see why I like to use a scale to measure my butter, especially because it's just so tidy and simple. Um, and there we go. Oh, I see uh, Dor uh, Aura, you just said, no more Zoom struggles. That's precisely it. We want to deliver you the best we can. So we've got the two camera angles here and I'm just going to use my spatula to soften up the butter a little bit. And so we've got 175 grams of that. And then I've got my two thirds of a cup of granulated sugar because uh, this cookie, it's a simple, um, you would call it a drop cookie because we're gonna just simply drop them onto the cookie tray and so it's got a simple vanilla flavor but you want to take the time when you're making a simple cookie like this to cream the butter and the sugar well because that friction as you cream the butter and the sugar against the side of the bowl it aerates the butter a little and that's going to give your cookie some structure it's really really important when you're making shortbread cookies to make sure that you never cheat on this step now, if you wanted to, of course, you could pull out the electric beaters or put this in the stand mixer, but it does come together easy enough by hand. 
So I see we've got lots of people joining in. This is fabulous. I know it's a surprise. You're not used to seeing me at this time of day, but as I mentioned, we're advancing our technology so we can come back in our regular time slot with some new live streams. I've got lots planned for you. There we go. Now that this is nice and soft, and you'll find though, it's not terribly fluffy, nor is it really supposed to be. So now it's time to add our single egg. And I'll just squish that in. And have you ever made a cookie dough? And when you add your egg, you notice that the butter sugar mixture starts curdling a little bit, especially if you have a recipe that calls for two eggs. Well, that happens. It just simply happens. It's just, it could be the temperature of the butter. It could be, there's nothing that you have done wrong. It's just the nature of the ingredients, but you do want to smooth it out. So if you find that your mixture, as you're working in your egg, the mixture is becoming more and more curdled. Measure out your flour that you will be adding later and just add a tablespoon or, uh, or two of that to your batter with the egg and the sugar. It will smooth out the batter. The flour will bring it together. Then you can keep mixing and adding your eggs before you add the rest of your dry ingredients. But you just want to make sure you're taking that from the flour that's already factored into the recipe, not adding extra flour to the recipe. But here, we've got a nice smooth combination of butter, sugar, and egg. So I can add my teaspoon of vanilla. And as usual, where you will find this recipe at the bottom of the screen under the video window. And this will be posted on the OEM channel. So you can go back um, if it's really early or really late and you just, because I surprised you, you don't have a chance to make these cookies, you can go back and check it out later. So now for the dry ingredients, like I said, super, super simple. I've got one and three quarters cup of all purpose flour. I'll add that in and just a quarter teaspoon of salt. I want to keep these really simple. As I've said, it's about just a sugar cookie base. And then we're going to do the thumbprint and fill it with jam. So I'm just going to stir carefully here. Now you will find, and this is typical to a thumbprint cookie because it's shaped, it will be a rather thick or dense batter, almost like a pastry dough, a short crust dough that you would roll. And the reason is because if it's too soft of a cookie, once you bake it, that thumbprint indentation in the center would actually bake away because the cookie would spread. So it does take a little more flour than you would add to say a chocolate chip cookie recipe. So it takes a little extra elbow grease to work it into. And you want to make sure you get to the bottom of the bowl and get all that dry mixture. I have been known to actually tip this dough out onto the work surface and bring it together with my hands. There is nothing wrong with that, but I will stick with my spatula right here. And Michael, how am I doing with my positioning of the bowl in the close-up? Okay, thank you. All right, we're working together on this to give you the best quality we ha can as we're live streaming real life cookies here happening. This is fun. Now, if you wanted to, of course, you could add some lemon zest, orange or lime zest to this recipe to give it a little character but I wanna keep it all about the jam. And I'm gonna take a minute here and take a look at, oh, we got some, we have great, oh, look at everybody who's joined us. Yes, thank you, TJ, for the reminder that we are premiering my triple chocolate cheesecake tomorrow morning at nine. And not only are we premiering it, but I will be part of the live chat. So I can't have these cookies take too long tonight because in 12 hours, I'll be right back here and what I'll be doing is I'll be on the live chat with you. So if you want to add your, ask your baking questions, because sometimes when I'm here cooking, just like I am now, I can't always catch all of your questions. Uh, choo, choo, choo. Oh, Mayra, you are asking, you want to start baking as a profession. What should you do? Well, you know what? That's a very good question. I don't know where you are in your career and in your life, but if you think you want to be a professional pastry chef and own a bakery or work in a restaurant, what I recommend is if you haven't done it before, go try it. 
because working in a restaurant kitchen or in a bakery is very different than cooking in a home kitchen and to actually go and offer you can offer your time for a day quite a few places would say yes and just watch and see what happens it's it's a very different activity and then that way it tends to hook you or it sends you running the other direction. So I'd be curious, but it's amazing now how many people can start baking businesses from their own kitchens and start small and then you control it and you control your growth and your own process and develop your own culinary or baking identity. Okay, we're ready to scoop the cookies. Now, as I said, this is quite a dense batter and I'm actually going to scoop right onto my wooden work table. If you didn't have a wooden work table, you'd want to do this on a cutting board. And these cookies are too large. This is the size I would use if I was making a chocolate chip cookie. But I want to cut these in half to make a smaller, more delicate thumbprint cookie. This recipe makes about three dozen, so I'm not going to scoop and cut each of the three dozen right now. Let's do... I'll do nine. So that'll be 18 cookies and half the recipe. And I'll just bake the rest off later. I do love using the portion scoops for cookies. That way each cookie is precise. But the dough is firm enough, as you can see, that you could actually shape it into a log and then cut it into the single cookies. There's my knife I used for my butter. But now that I have these portion scoops, I'm going to cut each cookie in half. And then I'll take each half portion and just shape it into a ball in my hand, like so. So it's quite delicate and small. That way, if you eat two or three, there's no problem. But you don't want it, you, you have to put your thumb or knuckle is actually what I prefer to use. And let me just slide these over. You guide me, you let me know, Michael, if I need to move my positioning. But how, does that make it better? Yeah, with your, okay. And so these cookies spread a little bit, but not too much. What I particularly like about this jam thumbprint cookie recipe is you'll notice from the picture on the thumbnail image that they don't crack on the sides. I used to make thumbprint cookies and the minute you stick your thumb in them, the cookie dough would crack and split. And I thought you're just, you're losing that attractive look. So I really worked hard to get a recipe that is tender, buttery, delicate, doesn't spread too much, but yet is not so dry that it cracks when I stick my finger in it to make the space where the jam goes. So I'm almost done here. How fast can we roll 18 cookies? Choo, choo, choo. I see there's a conversation happening about assorted portion scoops. Oh yes, you want the full collection of scoops. That way, whether you're making chocolate truffles, large cookies, cupcakes, there are some really good standard sizes. I just pulled out the one. I find if I go with a little scoop, it almost is faster if I go with a bigger scoop and cut it in half. So that's a good point. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, we got a banana bread. Oh yes, I do love melting the butter when I add my banana bread. Now Flo's asking a timely question because now it's time for the jam and the thumbprint in the cookies. Now, when it comes to the jam you want to use in your thumbprint cookies, what's your favorite? In fact, I use thumbprint cookies as a great way to clean the fridge. You know when you have this much jam left in two or three jars? Well, you can either mix up the flavors, do some that are raspberry, some that are apricot, some that are strawberry, or you can stir all the jams together. And that's actually what I did. I had red currant jam and raspberry jam, so I stirred the two together. I like red currant because it's a bit tart. Now normally, what I used to do with my thumbprint cookies is I would make the indentation, bake the cookies, and then I would fill them after they came out of the oven. And I found one of two things happened. The thumbprint indentation would kind of disappear a little bit, and then when I filled the cookies after they had baked, well that jam stays kind of sticky, and the flavor, it just, yeah, they're hard to stack and they make a mess in the cookie tin. And I find that by filling them before I bake them, the jam cooks into the cookie a little bit, stays in place, and then you can stack them better when they're in your cookie tin. 
I've got a little dish with just some water and it's up to you if you want to use your thumb. I prefer using my um, forefinger knuckle. I'll start back here. And you dip your finger in the water, that way it doesn't stick to the cookie. And that way you get a, I find with your knuckle, you get a nice deep imprint and you don't get a fingernail mark, which is rather unappealing. And so you just press gently. The bigger your knuckle, well, the bigger the space you'll have for the jam. Michael, you've got bigger hands than I do. You could <laughs> leave lots of room for jam. But you could even make daintier ones if you used your measuring spoon, your quarter cup or quarter teaspoon measuring spoon. You can make a tiny little indentation for almost petty four style cookies. There we go. And then I like to, when you're adding your jam to your filling, you want to give the jam a good stir because if it's really thick, you don't want lumps or clumps of your jam. And I like to use two little spoons and you just drop. So one spoon is your scooping spoon to go into your jam. The other spoon guides it so then you're not making a sticky mess. And you just fill that little indentation right to the top. Now, a question I've been asked is, well, could you use um, sugar-free or low sugar jams in this cookie? And I find the double fruit or low sugar jams can spread sometimes and you may find they leak out of the thumbprint cookie. But what you can do is always give one a try. Bake one cookie, test it with the jam, and then you'll find out because these only take 12 to 14 minutes in a 180 Celsius oven, so 350 Fahrenheit. Um, so you'll know very quickly how your jam behaves. But I do find these store well because they're a little crisp on the outside, but with the jam center, they're nice and soft. Like I said, a surprise demo. We're keeping it simple and sweet. And I'm getting there. I do. I really like mixing up the colors, especially if I'm doing holiday cookie tins. That way you've got some of all colors in there and all flavors. And you know, everybody's going to pick their favorite. I suppose you could do Nutella even. Ooh, that could be good. And there we go. How's everybody doing here? This, oh, we've got lots of people joining us. I love it when you see two different colors of Oh yeah, you could even do two colors in one cookie, side by side. It, t it would take a little bit longer to do, but it'd be beautiful. Uh, okay, good. We're getting some technical advice here as we go through about getting our camera aspects right. We're taking everything to heart. Hello to Manila. Um, good, and I'm glad you're going to make this your weekend bake. So as I mentioned, this takes 12 to 14 minutes in a 180 Celsius or 350 Fahrenheit oven. I do set the timer for about 11 minutes. That way I can tell. You'll want to see it just browning lightly at the edges and then you'll know when it's done. So I'll set my timer for 11 minutes, as I said. And of course, even though this was a surprise live stream, I got some cookies ready for you so you can see how the cookies have spread a little bit, but they don't have that crack at the edges. They've got, they hold a nice round shape. So a little dusting of icing sugar is nice, but I thought, well, let's dress them up just that one step more and drizzle them with a little white chocolate just to finish them off. So there we go. I've got my parchment paper. I already have just an ounce and a half, so 45 grams of white chocolate. Now, interestingly, I, what I do sometimes for a small amount of chocolate, you can pop it in the microwave, just stir it often, stop the microwave and stir it often. I put my chopped white chocolate in this bowl and I just popped it in the oven. The key is set your timer because while we were doing our technical test before we got started, I was melting my white chocolate and I let it go far too long. and. How can something so delicious smell so awful when it burns? And so I did restart and I have fresh white chocolate here. Good to go. It's cooled a little bit, but now I'm simply going to make a parchment pastry cone. And I know you can do this easily. So I've got my rectangle of parchment, but I'm going to cut a right angle triangle like so. And to make your parchment cone, 
What you want to do is bring your points of the triangle together. That's the easiest way to think of it. And so the, the tip of your parchment cone is not the right angle of the triangle. It's actually the opposing side. So when you fold over and overlap and bring your three points of the triangle together and you, you kind of wiggle them around, there you have that perfect point. And then you can't put scotch tape on parchment paper. It won't stick and you don't want to use staples around food. So you just fold over that top edge and you've got your perfect parchment cone. And I'm just going to grab a glass. That way I can drop it and then simply pour my melted white chocolate in. There we go. You know what? I've been working with chocolate a lot more these days. I think a live stream that deals with tempered and tempering chocolate would be amazing, wouldn't it? Lots of fun. I've got so many ideas and I've been working on so many projects. Um, all right. Oh, good. I'm glad to, people are reading recipes. I'm just catching up on the notes you're writing because I've had my hands full. Uh, da -da. Oh, good. Victoria made the citrus scones with good success. I'm just going to make, snip a little opening. And before I start drizzling, I just like to do a test. There we go. To make sure I've got a fine texture. Now a note, once you start piping, you'll see the seam of the piping bag I have here. Are you on the close-up shot, Michael? How's that for framing? Good. Okay. I have to learn where to hold things when we proceed. But you'll notice I have it tucked in. So as I tuck, the more chocolate I use, I tuck and it keeps the seam tight. That way your opening won't open up and you'll end up with blobs or glops of white chocolate. So now where I'm just going to drizzle over each of the cookies. Super simple. Just keep it nice. White chocolate tends to be sweeter tasting, um, so I find a little goes a long way when it comes to white chocolate. Of course, you could use milk or dark chocolate if you wanted to. But I just think this is so simple and delicate. It's just, these are screaming for a cup of tea. Oh, good morning, princess in vanilla, uh, vanilla. Clearly I have baking on my mind in Manila. I have visited Manila. Um, it's been about four or five years now since yeah. I've been there. I need to go back when we're allowed to move around a lot more. And there we go. Tocino di Cielo. Oh, I love Tocino di Cielo. <laughs> I love it. So sweet, so intense. I have tried it. So many delicious desserts. Okay. I can bring those cookies forward for you, Michael, sitting on the tray. But even left undecorated, they're pretty on their own. Now, because I didn't, I used baking chocolate for this, so the cookies will take an hour or two for the chocolate to fully set. You could pop them in the fridge for a minute and they will set up more quickly. If you wanted to hold them, um, have them set faster, you would go through the process of tempering, which I am going to make a note because I think that would make a fabulous live stream to do. Um, or you could melt, um, and I know Cherry watches these videos and she was asking me about compound chocolate. So if you melted white chocolate chips, that you would stir into chocolate chip cookies or use compound or coating chocolate, that too you could drizzle on top and then that would set, set in a matter of minutes. So no matter how you choose to do it, I am so glad you took some time to join me for this surprise live stream. And it's good to know that you're always ready for a surprise. Blah, blah. <laughs> I've surprised myself too. So I'm gl so glad we were able to improve our technology. We're constantly looking to continue to improve, but it means that I know I can with confidence return to doing these live streams and I can't wait to see you again sometime soon. So look, give these cookies a try. 12 minutes, they're in the oven, and you're enjoying something buttery, sweet, and delicious. Little taste of home. It's a little old fashioned, but you know what? I'm okay with that. Thank you so much for joining me, everyone. I'll see you soon, really soon. Keep yourself posted. 
right here at the OEM channel because announcements for the next live stream and all the new releases are coming your way. Mm-hmm. Oh, that combination of raspberry and red currants, good. Mm. Say one more yeah, I'll say another goodbye. This has been fun. I love these little surprise pop-up baking sessions. <laughs> Michael says goodbye too, and thank you to TJ for being a part of it. <laughs> mm. I was ready for a cookie. I gotta say goodbye. Mm -hmm.